going to see here today, we're going to go through this little device. Now this device will save you on countless occasions whenever you're going to make possibly or difficult airway. The ability to use this quickly and effectively is absolutely important. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through some of the features of the endoscope, a quick checklist, uh, some of the movements so you know exactly how to maneuver this to get to the site you want to get to, get down through those cords into the trachea, and then a few troubleshooting steps as well. So let's get started. First of all, the features. Now, this can either be a fiber optic scope or one with a camera in it. It doesn't really matter to me too much. Um, the features are that first of all, I've got this structure here, which allows me to visualize through an icons or a screen like this. I've got this control lever here, which changes the direction, flex and retroflex off the tip. And this port here is either suction or oxygen. This is a trigger that activates that process, so either activating suction or oxygen. I've got a working channel, so this little port here, I can either put liquids, uh, saline, uh, local anesthetic through there. Finally, I've got this end. So as you can see, it flexes and retroflexes. It's also got a light source that allows me to make sure I can see what I'm seeing, and it's got the, either the camera or the fiber optic tip at, at the side over there. That's about it. So, let's get started. The first thing I check is the light source, and this is as simple as making sure that there's a bright light from there as well as maybe I go down onto a piece of script and just making sure that I can see it well. At the same time, I can check the focus to make sure I can read the letters that I read. Again, the next part of this process is simply flexing and retroflexing the tip. And that way I can make sure that the focus is good at all sites and I can read the writing that I'm, I'm looking at down on the screen. Now, this oxygen suction port is something I also check. So I connect this here, and then I connect this other end to the oxygen port. So I press this, and I can feel oxygen flowing from there. So that's how you check that that channel is working as well. And finally, the working channel. So what this is, it's a way that I can deliver, especially in the anesthetic context, local anesthetic, to the region I need that local anesthetic in. So for example, I'm doing an awake fiber optic, and I just want a good spray of local anesthetic where I'm directing my scope. With this working channel, you're able to thread an epidural catheter. And it takes a bit of effort to do so on these disposable scopes, and so it's a really good idea to keep it you know, absolutely vertical like this as you thread the catheter to avoid resistance. And you'll see that it can just emerge out from there, and I pre-prepare this before I'm about to do the awake fiber optic. Now, what I do then is I hook this onto the end and clasp that, and that way I can fit a lure lock syringe on the end of that, or a normal syringe, and then this can spray really effectively any of the areas. And that way you can get a nice spray just like that. Yeah, you can get a nice spray like that. So that's if you thread the epidural catheter. On the proper non-disposable scopes, it's much easier to thread the catheter through. Now that can take a bit of time, so you might want to outsource that to someone else to do um, and have that prepared if you're doing this awake fiber optic reasonably electively. Now you can also use the working channel with just a normal five mil syringe. I use two mils of your local anesthetic and make sure I've got about three mils of air. I then put it like so and push it into the working channel. What this air does is as I press down, you get a bit of back pressure that allows the local anesthetic just to spray out to cover a good area of where, where you're working with. So what I'm gonna do there is just press pretty firmly to allow it to spray out, like so. Sometimes I have maybe five of these five mil syringes with two mils of local anesthetic, just so I can spray as I go to what air, whatever area needs uh, local anesthetic. And that's all, that's the working channel. With this scope, I've just got a few movements I need to worry about. That is flex and retroflex, which we mentioned before. I can then do rotation. You can see how in that movement, I'm able to rotate the flex tip or the retroflex tip the way I want it to be. And then the final two movements are just pushing forward, so advancing and retracting. One really important thing, if you're at extremes of flex and retroflexion, you may have difficulty advancing this. If you've got a tip like that, it's far more difficult to advance than a tip that's roughly straight or has minimal deviation on it. Likewise, to have a severely angulated tip could be potentially dangerous to withdraw. It's one of those things that's really important to know. So those are really your movements. Your aim is therefore, as you orientate yourself within the trachea, you find your target, you put your target on the axis of your flex and retroflex, and then I flex my tip towards that, and then I advance. 
each time doing this micro adjustment.